St. Peter never ceases to amaze me and surprise me, and I think one of the biggest surprises this evening is uh, the place where we're sitting, and I'm sitting with the owners of a wonderful, wonderful, re well, I was going to say restaurant. Tell me, first of all, what your, both your names are. My name is Aniko. It's a Transylvanian name, Hungarian. And I am Michi, but Michi is like Mike. It's a nickname for Michael. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we're sitting in now, tell me, would you call this a cafe? Is it a restaurant? What exactly is it? <laughs> That's a good question because it started out with our intention of being a bakery and a small bakery cafe front. And as the customers came in, they requested more and more foods. And now it's leaning toward a combination cafe restaurant, but with a bakery background. And I see this man sitting next to you, and I must tell you, and you can see this on television, um, he reminds me a lot of a wonderful English actor called Charles Lawton. I'm sure you've had that said to you before. Now, your part in this whole operation is what? Well, I am just co-owner. We both started this. We, uh, our background is in different areas. I mean, but do you do the cooking? I uh, to help Not out. if I can help it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm surrounded by um, wonderful things to eat, and I see looking at your menu here that one of your specialties are strudel, and having a German wife, which I do, I'm well familiar with the strudel, but is strudel one of your specialities? Yes, that was our main goal, To uh, Actually, we first considered having a wholesale business of just preparing strudel and then we felt that I am very much a community oriented person and since we decided to have a cafe front we exposed our strudel to more of the town's people and got that acquainted and yes the strudel is the name Mishi strudel that is our focus you know when our camera pans around this place as our viewers will see it is a really sort of, uh, I guess the word is homey and comfortable and friendly. <laughs> and in designing it and putting it together, what were some of your considerations in actually doing that, in making it and having it give the feel that it is? As I was doing my master's work in music in Vienna, and in Munich, I spent a lot of time at the cafe houses in Vienna, in Austria. I know them very well. Yes, I love them so much. And I never dreamed in my life that I would have a cafe someday. But as I was, that was coming to a reality, that inspiration was in my soul as to make it similar to what those are. Did that play a big part? I mean, it's really fascinating that you have so many strudels and um, I guess because I have a sweet tooth, I mean, did that sort of impact you, the, the coffee houses of Vienna, in saying, yes, I'm going to have a strudel place? No, not at all. We didn't no. even think of strudel at that time. It, really? was, it was strictly my husband's aunt that encouraged us to get into the, trying it out. Okay. But the cafe house itself was um, an inspiration to me where the poets and writers and authors and musicians would gather. And even here, as we opened, we've had people finish books here and compose music, and we have opera night every first Thursday here as well. And do you have a website? And if you do, what is the website's name and address? The Michi Strudel, which has two S's in the middle, and uh, the website is uh, www.mishistrudel.com. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you both very much. Thank you very Thank much. You. It's very wonderful. delightful. Thank you for coming to our cafe. Thursday, and I'm so happy to take you up our 100-year-old elevator at the Lofts. Wait a minute, a 100-year-old elevator? Yes, it's 100 years old. It's a hydraulic elevator, and you have to learn how to work this. It's a freight elevator, which artists need if they're doing sculpture or large paintings. You have to be able to have a large elevator to convey your work. But it's safe. Oh, yes. W ride with me, and <laughs> you'll be safe. <laughs> Oh, 
And we're now transported to a completely different, wonderful, magical world. My goodness, where are we going? Well, uh, let me introduce you to the founders. My name is Candace Gunn, and I'm one of the artists here. I have a studio, and there are eight studios ringing the building. And then in the center, we have two gallery spaces, a small one and a large one. We, have, we put up uh, new uh, shows every two months. It's always uh, fascinating when you come into a place like this to uh, see and talk to the people who sort of founded it. And I happen to be lucky enough to talk to the founder. Tell me your name. My name is Jan Govertz. And this idea came to you how and how long have you been doing it? Tell me a little bit about it. Um, I went back to school uh, at Cal State Dominguez and graduated in 91. And at that time, I started a studio in Wilmington. At one point, I thought, well, this is kind of silly. I know there has to be a place in San Pedro for us. So I just hit the streets and started looking. And you came to San Pedro specifically because? I live here. Oh. OK. <laughs> yes. Okay. And I wanted to work here. In addition, um, are any of these paintings yours? No, this is a um, guest show. This is the Redondo Beach Art Group. And so all of these paintings and photographs are, were curated into the show. So yeah. even though we're in San Pedro, you welcome people from other communities locally? Absolutely. Yeah, we were just showing our own work here, but it got to be a lot to have our own work here every month when we're open on first Thursday. So we started inviting people. And it makes it more interesting because there's a, a, a big mix then of artists who show here. And, and how long are you open from what time in the evening to what? From six to nine six to on nine. first Thursday, yeah. Okay. One of the uh, interesting things about going in a place like this is actually looking at the artworks. And I've always been kind of, um, as Mark knows, off-center, as it were, and have a kind of an off-center kind of humor. And I really love these three things here. And they are done by an artist who is standing by my side. Tell me your name. Anne-Marie Rawlinson. And tell me a little bit about these three, uh, the one there. Tell me a little bit about that. Uh, it's called Gottwoda, and it was inspired by seeing uh, Lake Arrowhead uh, water track. The colors of the boxes were exactly what I saw. So um, I'm currently a member of the Women's Caucus Echo Group, and uh, that uh, grows, flows into this Gottwoda piece. So I wanted to make a statement of how precious water is and that we have to. I would say that's an incredible statement. Now these two thing here, um, they're sort of, I don't know how to describe them. I mean, they're paintings, they're artworks. Tell me a little bit about how you did all this. Uh, yeah, well, it came about because the LA Assemblage Group is a group I founded 16 years ago or more, 17. And we decided to do a group, a group project with different famous people, dead or alive. This here was a group chose, project? And you have to guess who it is. <laughs> no, it was not this one. Everybody did a personality, a famous person, either dead or alive. So you have to guess now who this is. And I have are multiple clues in it. <laughs> well, I don't know. I, my, the first thing that comes to mind is Jacqueline Kennedy, but that can't be her. Don't, no. <laughs> don't keep me guessing. Who is it? Kate Middleton. Oh. The hat, yes. and there's the queen also. Oh. The queen, and then her parents, and uh, here, her husband, and so on. So, yeah. looking closely, you would have gotten it. <laughs>